This talk is about upper back and balance and how it works together. I focus as a chiropractor on posture, neurology, muscle structure, soft tissue structure. I call my phys myself a, a physical therapist along with a neurologist and, a, and orthopedist. And a psychologist. As, no, not a psychologist. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're very good. I avoid that completely as much as I can. <laughs> my thing is I want you guys to understand you have to move to stay healthy. By moving the right direction all the time and for the most part knowing what to do allows you allows you to stay healthy so physically, mentally, and psychologically your body stays strong and relaxed, tolerate stress every day. Most doctors will tell you if it hurts, stop moving, correct? Or take a pill. I do the opposite. I want you moving so you're upset with me because it moves because it hurts and sometimes it's sore. Because your body requires things to stretch and move to stay loose, those nerves go from your muscles, from your joints to your brain. That brain neurology controls your body's hormones, keep your body relaxed and strong. And you have a good attitude with it every time. If not, it was, don't, don't blame me, blame my partner. Right? If I do something wrong, I don't know. Okay. To start with, upper back and shoulders, we focus on is going to be here, from shoulder, back of the shoulder here, all across the opposite side, and those areas. I go upper back meaning lower neck, down to your lower rib cage, right where your diaphragm is. Okay? The problem is most people have issues because we sit so much, we sit and we relax like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again here, same thing. Relax like this, where our body drops, hunches forward, forward hunch posture, makes your overall body lock in. When you do that, is that making the rib cage open or close? Close. You don't know. So come on, come on. <laughs> It closes it off. So what happens is people with scoliosis, for example, or problems where they have a real concave chest, their body actually puts pressure on the hearts and lungs, other organs too. People have scoliosis for one too, have problems where they hunch forward and to one side, pushes the heart over, heart causing heart issues. It also causes the lungs to collapse sometimes on that same side because there's no room to breathe. The more our body's upright, the higher rest and breathing we have, to not cause problems with breathing, with neurology, even with um, a brain function too. You have to keep our body up here more, if anything, than here. So if you do that, what I've found is the best way to do this is to sit forward in your chair. Everyone follow me, Simon says. And then for, if you can, bring your feet either underneath your chair or behind you on the sides your body allows your body to naturally spring up here instead of being here like this. Allows you to lean back to maintain your balance so you don't fall forward or fall off the chair this way. Any questions about that? Simple enough, right? Why don't we do it? We just sometimes don't know or don't feel like it. If my body's used to this, if I do this, it's going to feel uncomfortable stiff and sore, and sometimes off balance. Good. That tells me we have to change our body back here by causing more motion. So again, if we cause our body to move this way and hold this position, our brain over time will calibrate that as our normal posture. I want Chuck to realize by his walking all the time, allows things. I got misdirected. Of course, you've never been here before in your life. I understand. Try three of the rooms first. <laughs> allows your body to calibrate your body by moving this way and by moving for example not sitting obviously by moving a position where your body's upright all the time your body stays here this way if you allow your body to sit this way and more importantly walk this way here with your weight on your heels this okay so number one thing we talked about a second ago is how you sit if you sit a lot, knees below our hips, feet either under, underneath us or the side of us here on the front edge of the chair so our body stays. So there's nothing new. We've done this a thousand times, I think. I think literally a thousand times in this class before. From here, we maintain this by walking and standing in this better position here. If you first time here, setting your wall posture first too. Standing wall posture, heels, hips, shoulders, and head so our body stays here. Okay? First time I see someone, they go, I can't do this, my butt's sticking out or sticking too close to the wall. My head's too far off. My shoulders are back. Great. Again, I want you uncomfortable, so 
I want you to better standard normal. Again, Upland City, they're very strict on their codes, architectural codes. This wall should be permitted to be about 90 degrees to horizontal, I'm assuming. If we can maintain and get our body back here and walk to where, even if we're here, we walk to where we slowly come back up, our body can get there and maintain that very easily. Okay? I don't know how you try this and see how this feels. All of this is great, except if except. you're sitting in front of your keyboard on the computer. No. <laughs> don't tuck your chin, Chuck. That's the problem. Okay. So how does that feel to you, Miss Eleanor? That feels better than it used to. Why? I'll say that. Why is that, intent? Because I've been, I've been exercising, doing what you said, these things with the water bottles and mm. all. She's a patient of mine. She's, she's like a, a paid paid spokesperson <laughs> for my office. So. Sure. Okay. <laughs> my biggest thing she's learned is that when she first came in, she was like this. This is as far as I can go. And over time, as we, as we stand up straighter and we move in this better position, we get our body to sit back here and we start moving the back muscles you had mentioned, but in certain exercises, that motion gets your joints to move back here in your middle back of your spine. At that point, if the joints move, your body wants to relax and stretch so it becomes more of a normal posture here, your bones want to go back to here. We've done such a good job, we've done a phenomenal job as people sitting so much, our body has adapted to that posture because we told our body to do that. That's Dowinger's hump too. When you Dowinger's hump, exactly. Dowinger's hump is right back here. Yeah, is your C7-T1 hump right there, some people get, because your body, upper back will hunch forward, yeah. but the head does the same thing. The problem is we're not gonna wanna mm -hmm. fall forward, so our head will naturally come back to maintain a better balance. If you lock in that area, build a tissue and cartilage, becomes a more of a normal hump. Is there something about the chin tucking mm -hmm. in or something? It's something when you reverse that posture by sitting up straighter, and by standing up straighter, the head can now come back. It's called translate backwards. Then from there, make that better position, your shoulders drop, and over time what will happen is your body stays here. Once you have that, that's cartilaginous soft tissue, it's hard to take that out of there. Unless you want to do surgery or get a scalpel and cut it out, so it's kind of Frankensteinish, not my thing. Okay. Any questions so far? I have a problem with pressing my legs. Oh, we'll talk about that next time. But today we'll talk about it too. Cross your legs. Walk. Yes. Last time you talked about using a pillow in bed. Yes. Doesn't that tend to make your head come forward? Wouldn't you be better off? without a pillow so that you're on a flat bed just like you are against the wall? You've seen way too many of my talks. I brought a pillow today to demonstrate how to use a pillow or rolled up bath towel properly to get your head to fall backwards. What you're talking about is, we talked about last time, is if I use a pillow, the pillow, say for example here, this paper, a little bit bigger obviously, my head should be in the middle of the pillow or on, on top of it so the bottom of the pillow, the perimeter, sits at the top of your shoulders here so your head sits in the middle of the pillow. Was that, did that answer your question? Well, again, doesn't that make your head fall slightly forward as opposed to being nice and straight like you are against the wall? You want, when you're lying down, good question, or good, good observation. When you're lying down, your head can slowly relax, your muscles relax too. So that edge of the pillow, say if the pillow is right here, by putting it at the base of your shoulders, or base of your neck, top of your shoulders, allows your head to naturally fall backwards, go to the wall, you want that loaded posture to be that better position. So if I'm lying down, my head will naturally, unless you have, unless you have rods in there, naturally fall backwards on a pillow. By having that edge right about here, allows you, that area, allows you to fall back more over that pillow. Okay, thank you. Talking about the top right of the pillow. Right here where that is. So that, this will be the edge of the pillow right there. So the middle of your the middle of the pillow will be right in the back of my big head, right back here. See. Okay. So now I would use I would use a medium weight. Thank you. Yeah. Use a medium weight pillow, not a really thick pillow. Medium weight or a lightweight pillow where your head will sink into the pillow. I think the weight is meant. If that's what it's meant to do, is the, the firmness of the pillow itself too. So being on the edge allows you to fall back. So your overall body sits here, not like this, lying down. Can you have use arthritis back pillows. there? Should it be different? If you have arthritis in your neck? No, you should actually do it if you have arthritis. Okay. But to tolerance, right? If, if I'm going to bend something, I'm going to bend something enough to where it causes stretch, soreness, but not pain. I want to stay below that range of pain. 
Once they hit the pain level and those muscle ligaments stretch too far, it's called the plastic phase, at that point they guard and tighten right away. Have to find your tolerance over time, but as you go to that, that elastic phase to where you can stretch and what's sore, you maintain that better position, over time then you can go further and further and further. So you want to make sure you give yourself time to stretch, not just do it once and you're done. It's a daily thing. Daily thing. I stretch, I use a hard foam roller every morning to stretch my back, my legs. Um, I use a stick, I'll show you in a second, stretch my shoulders every day. Because things will slowly want to creep up and tighten up. You have to continually move, actively move, and stretch to get things to stay loose. So at that point, it becomes our daily routine. So then our problems start going away. It's going to be more of a normal being healthier and relaxed and less pain versus being sore all the time. But it takes a daily routine of whatever's, whatever's ailing you to stretch that every day so your body can maintain that through, through unconsciously. Last night I take my dog to the bed at 2 in the morning. Amazing. Fun times, right? I still get up at 7.30 to do my stretches before I went to the gym. Crazy. But it's going to happen. It's life, right? So how do we adapt to that? I make sure we can routines for the rest of my day will still be okay. Any questions at all? Go ahead and answer your question. Mean weight pillow, target or Walmart, but the biggest thing is replace me every six months. None of us do this. Replace it every six months. The pillow. Because the firmness will, that, that cushion, that absorption will stop. And also you start hitting the head at the bottom of the bed. Well, I wouldn't hear when I'm lying down, should it be sort of flat? Not you, you, you hear the indicated yeah. a couple of times. Flat, it's flat so meaning that my head, if, if this is if so this hard. is supported, my head instead of being here, if it's natural, it's going to be more here. Straight so up. So support exactly. Yeah, you're tilted back. I'm, I'm going to be here like this. Okay, but that's tilted back. That's your back. That's oh. that's my relaxed position. I feel normal here. Oh. I feel good here. This feels good to me. Oh, okay. Most people, if they're here. They may feel good here. Yeah. So you have to adjust your pillow, wherever your head's going to be in the pillow, yeah. based on what feels like, again, that stretch uh, uh -huh. and soreness maybe a little bit without causing pain. Mm. Yes? I really worked on that because I was impressed when I heard that last time. Mm. And it really works because otherwise I was sleeping on the bottom part of the pillow. So you do have a tendency mm -hmm. that's going to push your head forward. But when you lay further up on the pillow and your head is higher on the pillow, it it's amazing. It Did it feel uncomfortable the first couple nights? A little strange. Yeah. Like the first night maybe, yeah. but then I slept so well that way that and if you're woke head, up, no aches, pains, nothing. So. It's a miracle. Yeah, it it's is. A, I know. I said, oh, I'm going to start using that. What's that, that Mr. Pillow? <laughs> I'm going to invent my own Mr. Pillow. Yeah. Can fix everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> but can we, can we do things, if, if, like I said, if, we, if our head's further back, where's our body go? More here, oh. over time. And as you maintain that better position, we're going to walk and move and see that as our normal. We're going to want to feel like that every day. But it takes time to get there. Sometimes days, sometimes weeks. Sometimes it may never get there 100%. But can you adjust your position in your, in your bed or standing or sitting so it becomes a better normal over time and you maintain that better normal? All right. Yes, I'll write that down in the down line, Mr. Pillow. Dr. Tony. I'm going to plagiarize that guy. Any questions so far? Sure. I was wondering about those before. I sleep on my side. Okay. So sleep on the side. Good. I have an answer for this side thing. I'm sure you do. Good. So middle of the pillow, again, middle, middle of the pillow again. Okay, I'm going to be here. I'm going to put my head in the middle again. I put my head, my head on the edge, sorry. This is the middle of the pillow. I'd go to the very edge. This is the edge of the pillow. I put my head here on the edge. So my head is still here, not bending here, okay, yeah. not bending here. Makes sense. But also, you have to worry about your lower body too. If I'm on my side, what do most people do on their side? They bring that top leg in front a little bit, so they start going fetal. Mm -hmm. Okay? I would recommend trying, bringing your top leg behind you, so your body stays more, more relaxed in a straight position, straight, instead of being curled forward. As I curl forward, how's when I curl forward? My head does the same thing, it does this. Okay, my upper body does what? It also hunches forward too. So you have to watch your body, you don't have to watch your body, because that'd be weird. You get out of body experience. But, but can you watch your body enough and where your body should be 
By doing little adjustments, like I said, side sleeping, leg behind you, knee behind your, your top knee behind your bottom knee, so that's when your body stays a little straighter, head stays where it should be versus curling forward. Tell it on your stomach. Anyone sleep on your stomach? <coughs> Don't do it. I don't recommend it at all. There's no cure for that. Okay. But we learn so many different ways how to sleep by what's comfortable, correct? If I'm, this is my comfortable here, I'm going to want to sleep this way. So we have to get our body, if we want this to change, we have to get our body to do something different on your side or on your back so it feels different, feels sometimes weird or awkward until so it becomes your new normal. Okay? Yes? I like in the middle of the pillow, in the very middle of the pillow. Middle of the pillow is where I want your head to start, which I would not have to. This is what I do. That when your head stays there first. It may creep left and right or even further down, at least start in better position so you consciously know where to start when you sleep. Because that's usually the, the, the least firm part of the pillow is going to be in the middle. So you want your head to sink in there so it's supported by both sides and it goes a little bit further back behind your neck. And with your, your posture too, I remember from the video a couple weeks ago, you're the, you're the man of white up here. Your body is very forward. So wherever you feel comfortable with the pillow, have it feel a little bit of a pull in the front, a little bit of pressure in the back, just a little bit. That's where you're going to start. When I mentioned getting a one medium weight pillow from Target or Walmart, that may not work for you. Meaning two pillows to start, and over time, as your body improves, then maybe use one pillow instead of two. Give yourself time. Wherever you're comfortable, you got to kind of work with what you're working with. I would, I would maybe go down to one and maybe add a, maybe a towel or bath towel or something. So you have a little bit less width when you're when you put your head in the pillow. This is start with. Feel a little uncomfortable to start and then over time make that your better comfort zone. Yes, Chuck? I've, I've experimented with inflatable pillows. Mm, okay. And yes, you have. the pressure all over that uniformly. Mm -hmm. but it's hard to get them to last more than a few months because they invariably yeah, but but it, it, it is that idea okay to have a, a sort of a uniform pressure? I'm okay with that for your neck and upper back because that feels good to you. Because you walk so much, because you're so active, that may be your best posture. Because of your leg and side pain you've had in the past too, that may be where your body feels most comfortable. You maintain a good exercise routine. I don't worry about you as much. I worry about a little bit upstairs, a little bit. The humor. <laughs> well, that gets to me a little bit. It scares me in a good way. But, but allows, but you have enough activity in what you're doing and awareness of what you're doing. You're trying things that work for your body now. And, but you do push yourself also, which I like, past your tolerance sometimes too. So you do a good job with that. I, I give you a start, but I've got, I think I probably said I'm not sure about that. Is right. that a good pillow also for supporting your back when you're sitting? That's sometimes it too hard. It's a little bit soft. Oh, it is soft. Good, good question. So if I'm here, I'm going to use this pillow. Let me move this out of the way for a second. I'm going to use this pillow. If I can, I'm going to put it at more of my middle back. So if I, if, so my middle back can lean back more over the pillow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. People that drive a lot, what I do, especially in the winter, take your jacket, put it back here, yeah. and let your back push against her. So your back, upper back, can push further back behind your body. Mm. So your head can slowly touch that headrest mm -hmm. that you're told to do. Mm -hmm. All right, good, mm -hmm. okay. Well, the majority of your sitting position is either in front of a computer or in front of the TV. Yes. And I've learned I can kind of keep my back really straight now watching the TV. Or if you lie down enough, where I, what I do at home, I make my couch a, a, a recliner, put pillows on my couch, I can lie down so my head's relaxed on the back of the couch. So I, I, read the, I watch TV this way instead of sitting up the whole time. So my body's more of a slope position the whole time. As long as your body, if your body's 90 degrees to, say, the couch or a chair, that's pressure in your lower back and mid-back, making you want to hunch forward. If you go past 45 degrees, your body will naturally fall backwards to get that pressure and load off your back. I remember when we had a camper, the TV was up uh -huh. over there, and that was easy to watch the 
it's got a little crimpy all that. Yeah, this and this and yeah. You make those word glasses where you can, you can actually look straight ahead, your body, your head does, but the prism in there, it pushes down, so you're still actually looking at a book down here. It's a weird glass. I tried them on, like it gave me a headache, I think. I don't know what happened. Okay. What about the sciatica while you're sitting? I have two daughters who have sciatica problems. Um, I would use this pillow, I'm going to use this pillow for the mid-back right now. Use the same thing for your lower back. Okay, what I want to do is show you with a bath towel, or like I, I'd recommend a bath towel. Buy one of these weird pillows, thirty-five bucks. Take a bath towel. You have a bath towel at home, correct? Any color, any pattern will work. Okay. Use them like that. Roll it up right here. You go this way with it. You can go this way. Is and put it where you feel the most pressure is in your back, right here. So if I have pressure right here in my back, in the middle of my back, right there. Okay. I'm gonna light. Put that. Put that rolled up bath towel down and lean over that towel and let that pressure of the back towel push my body up to allow that arch of my back to go from being too far hunched to more of a flatter back. <coughs> Any questions about that? Okay, so again, if I'm, if I'm having lower back pain, same thing, I put the paint pillow, lower back, at the, the belt line, right there, and lean over that pillow, either legs up or legs down, doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Okay? Time-wise, for this, it's called, I call it the roll exercise, you can roll the bath exercise or towel exercise, is maybe a minute to start, and over time, add two minutes. So you want to do maximum two minutes. But you want to hold the stretch. You don't want to go up and down, you want to hold that for at least a minute, ligaments to stretch over the pillow. Makes Does sense. that make sense? Makes sense. If I have a pillow, and I'm here, I want my back to push over that pillow so it becomes more of a flatter back relative to where your body feels good. I have a wider one like that, but mine's softer than yours. That's fine. Hard. So I would, roll, I, would use, I would just go bath towel, straight bath towel, and if that feels good, then go to your pillow because it's a little bit harder. I just prevent that thing by having a pillow. Perfect. All kinds of that's, that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You should patent that. Yeah. <laughs> Make it your own pillow. Yeah. Any questions about that? This is a passive stretch for someone who has back pain, maybe low back, mid back, even sometimes neck pain, lower neck pain. This helps the body stretch over the pillow without muscle activation. Muscles cause the most amount of pain. They have the most receptors of pain. By calming them down first, getting below the muscle tissue, so ligaments in your spine stretch, not just the muscle. The stretching we need to do to get things to move, correct? If we move the spine and move muscles and ligaments around the spine, then your body can actually adjust your posture better. That makes sense. So a question? Good? I see I see smoke coming out of your ears. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Okay? So again, one more time. I call I call this the pillow stretch. Some people use the pillow. I use the bath towel here, middle back for the middle back stretch. Lean over. I have people on my patients start sometimes. If it feels good to them, one minute legs up, and from there, one minute legs down. Okay, but again, whatever you want to start one minute, that will let your body rest over that pillow, get things to stretch over time. From there also, if you want to modify it, go from having your, leg, your arms at your sides to arms overhead for more of a mid-back stretch so your back can go from being, being more of an arch backwards versus being a flatter back. So if, we're, if we naturally sit where we have a hunch, the pillow or the bath towel rolled up will allow you to flatten out your back. And from there, if you want to go even further back, if you feel comfortable for you, arch your back more, we bring your arms overhead. So all three steps, if you want to go through all three steps. Well, okay. I also have a pillow like that under my knees because I find it. Why it do you think you have it under your knees? Huh? Why under your knees do you think? Does it help your hips? Well, it helps, it helps the, the body relax. If my body is not comfortable here, lying flat on the floor on a firm bed. At that point, something is tight, something is locking up. Yeah. I want to see with a pillow, can you go to, or perhaps roll the back though, can you go to each position? Lower back, mid back, and even upper back here, can one spot feel more of a stretch for you? So at that point, you can test your body what feels more tight. What's staying tight or taut where it can't stay relaxed on its own? I ask my patients, well, the first question I ask my patients when they come in the door with pain, maybe back, neck, or mid-back, wherever it is, is do you wake up more sore or do you wake up more relaxed? They say more sore, 
something's staying tight and locked up when you're lying down, which should not be. Your lying down allows the bed or the floor, whatever you're lying down on, to support your pressure so things should stay relaxed. Something's staying tight, at that point, something is either neurologically locked up or structurally locked up where it can't, can't relax and lengthen. Do you think about the mattress? If it's hard and firm, maybe I wouldn't be relaxing. Maybe I would be all up tight. I'm thinking about taking and getting a stronger... A firmer firm mattress, mattress gives you more support. If you have a soft mattress, at that point your body will contour to that and relax in your position, yeah. not normal position, not normal wall position, yeah. not normal floor position, where it should be more of a flatter overall body when it's relaxed. Because this mattress is getting old, I think. Because mm -hmm. when I sat on it, I noticed it was going down. Mm -hmm. But this mattress I have upstairs looks, like it's got cushiony kind of things, but it's hard. That's with the cushion. It has a pillow. So it has a, bringing it's a, that down and using that one. That's probably a pillow top mattress. Yeah. That's in my head. better or not? That's better because it's more firm when you lie down on it. Okay. That's what I would use, but yeah. I don't sell mattresses. Just have to figure what you need to Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Any questions about lying down? So firm Stretching. Mattress is the best. Firm mattress is the best because you more support. I mean, I feel comfortable initially. That's they what feel I'm yeah. they feel sore. You have to get over that. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. You want to feel uncomfortable to get yourself healthier, stronger, and over time tolerate more stress. That, that's what it comes down to. Okay? I've, I've probably told the story about probably 20 times right here about Rachel. Came in in a walker, both legs, severe pain. Posture like this. And doctor told her, nothing we can do. Here's some more medications. Go home, rest, relax. It's painful. Don't do anything. That's a god situation. Getting worse and worse and worse. Took her x-rays. X-rays normal. Rachel, start walking. Start moving around. You have to stretch things out. But it hurts. Yes, it will hurt. Within a month, she went from a walker to a cane. Still cursing at me a little bit here and there from making her move more. But she went. now she walks. Last said about a year ago. So I started last a year ago, Rachel. Uh, she, now she walks 45 minutes a day. No cane, no walker. 100%. But took her to understand... I, I listen to my body, if I don't move, it becomes tighter, weaker, more pain. You have to move everything, get things to stay normal, and to keep our body not only physically normal, we realize in neurology when our body moves, those nerves from your spine, from your joints, from your muscles, go to your brain. They tell your brain to stay relaxed if there's normal motion. If not, it goes under stress. That stress long term can go to fight or flight, where now you don't sleep well. You're, you're very sensitive to pain. Things around you become more agitated. That's not a psychological issue, that's more of a joint issue. If you're in pain, it goes to that. Get rid of the pain by causing more joint motion, more muscle motion. Again, I'm not a therapist, I'm just a chiropractor. But understand the human body, how it works, it's all connected. You have to move more. Okay, next one off my soapbox here. Shoulder stretch for upper back, shoulder blades, left side, right side, right? Left side? The left side, right side, sorry, horrible left and right. Left side, right side. You want them to move over time. Group stick stretch. Okay, one you can do it this way, and I've checked on this before, is this way, all the way back, all the way forward. Ouch. Yeah, right yeah. now. Right, right. right. Ouch. I think, my, right. I think it was two years ago, a year ago, I, I had Chuck try it, and he was like, his face looked like he was still to pop out of his joints. Okay, but can we modify that to make those shoulders here? And here, move more, so at that point, get more motion, more relaxing, and over time, get it stronger, okay? Start with going to one side, so that feels comfortable, and then switch sides. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right? I'm moving my arms, correct? My shoulders. But those shoulders connected to my back here, so that whole shoulder joint moves the whole time. It's moving down and out here. Other side's gonna move up and over. If I'm doing this, that left shoulder's moving down and out. This one here's gonna come up and over the whole time. So you can either do a full That's rotation good. if you want, or, <laughs> or you can do each one at one time. Here, where it feels uncomfortable, then switch. Who wants to try this? Anybody? What's the percentage of people this age that can do that? I mean, just walk. Probably 20%.
Can you prove that over time? Yes. If you have not had shoulder surgery or arthritis in your shoulders, this should happen over time. But I have people in their 40s and 30s who can't do it either. Because why? If our body is stuck like this, can we move back easily? No. no. Trying to reverse that pause, trying to unlock everything here, make this looser, we want to reverse that. I had, a lady, I had a girl come in in her early 20s, shoulder injury, no surgeries, playing sports, stuck like this. So her body went from here to here to here. She was grouchy every day. It took her like three weeks to start smiling. We worked on the neck. She had neck pain and shoulder pain together, and now no problems at all. She did enough rehab, but it wasn't enough. Yes, Shai? I did that, but I don't have to do a whole rehab. That's okay. Like yep, yeah, you can get right here, and that's all. Wherever you can go, go. That's fine, wherever works for you. The wider is easier. Narrow is going to be more. If I go narrow, I will pop out my shoulders. Not going to happen. Narrow is harder. Narrow is harder. So wider is easier. I start at home. I start here. I do five wide at home first in the morning. If you're done five wide, do five. I go a little more narrow. Here, then I go a little more narrow with five wide. Five. Sorry. I just do it one way. Whatever works for you. If you're doing it, that's enough. That's your your top 25 percent of doing them. Period. Or you can use you can use your bath towel too to stretch your shoulders. I use my my bungee cord here. And just pull this one over your head, start here, let it fall behind you, here, and stretch this one behind you too, get that upper back stretch. It's called towel stretch, I, I have a video on this ready too, but starting here, hold that right arm up all the way up, use that towel on the other side, you get that door first, you give me one second, you got it? Okay, is it locked? Okay. So here, let that left arm relax. Let your right elbow with a bunch of quarter of towel drop your hand if you can behind your head. Let that left hand drop behind you to let that area stretch in your back. So our right shoulder is going to pull up. The shoulder plate pull down to get that stretch in your back. The more motion we cause, no matter what we're doing, the more motion we cause, the better for our body. All right. Other side, here. Let that left elbow drop. Let the right arm drop behind you. Get that whole left side to come up. Right side to drop, so get that upper back to stretch on the left hand side. Let's try this. That's a way to get the stretch band. Let's try it. It's cheaper to get the stretch band. Come on over, Michelle. Mm -hmm. What's your name again? Leora. Leora? Got it. Press the seat. So you're paying attention. I see. Well, I'm just kind of I know. You're taking over there. So let's. So start here. Bring this arm straight up. Here. Okay. Now bend this elbow behind you. There we go. And this way? Yep, that way. And there it is. Yeah. Okay. And the more you stretch this, the more you can pull it back. There we go. There's for straight And pull that down. So pull it down toward that side. Now let that arm come up. Good. The more of a stretch. Like that? Yep. Strengthen. Here and then also let it let let it pull down. down that way. So hold on to it with your right hand. Let that shoulder come up that way. There we go. It'll be easier with the towel. The towel will be more, more tension than the towel. And these are, yeah, these are good. Yep. I'm going to sell this. This will be next to the, with, with, your, with your Mr. Pillow from Dr. Tony. I'll, add, I'll throw this thing in. My towels all come apart. I'll get better towels. Get better towels. There we got to do. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes, Miranda. Is it better to use the stretching band? I like a towel because towel has more tension. And you control it better too. This one is a little bit more, more I'm going to call it bungee or elastic. Yeah. So you can go a little bit further up. But if, if I have the towel, I'm going to go here and let that pull me down the whole way. But this one you can pull on it too. You can do it the way you want to do it. You can use whatever color, whatever you want to use, use, but just do it. That's a cheap way of getting it's all about the more. Just do this. Huh. Okay. Another one. I've got my water bottles. I want to talk that support too. How to get this area is here to get them to come in. If it comes in, your shoulder blades, they pinch. What happens is your body's more upright. You're more here instead of being here. I call this one the wall fly. So I'm going to do it against the wall first to demonstrate. Here, again, same standing posture. Heels, hip, shoulder, and head. Elbows tucked in. And from here, bring your elbows, bring your hands out as your elbows are tucked in. 
for that point your shoulder blades will actually come together to pinch that area. So try that if you'd like. Sit forward in your chair here, elbows tucked in, let your hands come out to where your shoulder blades pinch together, hold and relax. You want to hold that outside position at that point, relax after about two seconds, do about five times. How How's long do you hold it? About two seconds. Two seconds. You don't bounce. If you can, shake it a little bit hard. Bring your elbows tucked in more. Elbows tucked in. At that point, only go, for, only go as far as you can where it, where it feels you keep your elbows tucked in the whole time. That's a good one. I like that. Very good. That was that improved. <laughs> that would get to the other loose yeah. Another one here, too. For strength. Right? Tuck down strength. And again, weight-wise, I'll use water bottles. It's more range of motion. We're going to about weights. Not making a strong range of motion, get those areas to move more back here. Just, just use water bottles. Any, any, any brand you want to use. All the way up, hold. Back in, glad some people got that joke. <laughs> and you get five of them, you said? About five. I'll five. start with five. And always hold two hold. seconds and then come back in. Okay? Another one here. So what is that up here when you do that? I'm sorry. It hurts because it's because it's tight. No, up here. Yeah. Here? Because that area is tight also. And that well, let me see here. Here? It doesn't want to move out as much. If your shoulders are going forward a little bit, it's not gonna want to come backwards. This, this exercise it makes your shoulders roll back at the same time. So really, like you mentioned too, that area here, upper back, right? Mm -hmm. It's connected to your shoulders on both sides, mm -hmm. also lower neck, and also lower ribs. So when you move something, other areas may move with it too, and if that's tight, how do we stretch that next? By causing motion, you're gonna feel things that may, may be off balance. Tighter, weaker, stronger, whatever it might be. How do we find out what our body's going through? Because everyone's body's different. How do we stretch that even more? I always have tight caps. I focus on stretching that every day. Not if you're walking like this all day. Right. Any questions about it? Yes? Uh, Tony, I think crystal geyser is best. Why crystal geyser? <laughs> <laughs> they Why just that? Work. They just work really good. I, I'm glad psychologically you like crystal geyser. Good for you. Got mineral acidic as well? Yes. Another one here too, it's called a reverse fly exercise. I've done this before also for your shoulders, but your shoulders out here. Now I want to do it for your upper back here, okay? If this area is a little bit pulled out, you want to make that area pull in together, not only in your middle back where it pinches the shoulder blades together, but also upper back, top shoulder blades that come together also this way. So I'll demonstrate on this chair here so you can see it. Take those crystal guys, do like crystal guys or water bottles on your sides and come up, pinch those blades back here together, top of your shoulder blades, and then when you come down, come down all the way, bring the water balls out in front of you a little bit, at that point bring them down the same position, that same plane, when you come down, <laughs> down, up, head up at the same time, head up, hold, pinch, and relax. Get from the side view here, five times two. I'll do five times also, here, Pinch the blades together, pinch. This, when I pinch my blades, my shoulder blades together back here, it makes me stop right about here with my hands. I can't go any further because it, it feels like it's going to lock itself out. So if you go too far, if you're going too high, that means you're not pinching them together enough. Make sure you really contract those muscles, pinch and relax. Heads up the whole time, pinch and relax. Whew, yeah, tired. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Is it, I use a machine at the yes. end that you pull down mm -hmm. that way. Does that do the same? No, it's different. That one actually, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. the, the pull down machine, the pull downs, they call they call pull downs for a reason, I guess. Pull downs yeah. are meant for your lats here are there? on the sides, okay. on yeah, your yeah, sides. Yeah. So at that point, it makes them stronger that way. Yeah, okay, but that's good too. That's, that's good for that mid back also. That's good for mid back, lower mid back, okay. not the upper mid back. And there's one you push. That's more for chest and shoulders in front. Not that upper back. No, that's gonna be more. That's right that's gonna be more of a, something else. For but again, if you're at the gym, do them all. But hold the exercise, hold it, and then relax. So bring it down, hold, and relax. You always, and when you want to do two with that exercise, you want if I'm gonna do the reverse flies, I'm gonna breathe out with a push, and then come back down. So breathe the exercise too. Breathe out and come back down. Hard part out. It's hard part. Easy Good. Part, yeah. What? That means that one too. Means I'm gonna 
steal that from you. All right, any questions about that? That thing is, can we do enough things to stretch, to strengthen, improve our posture, sitting or standing, so our body stays upright the whole time? All right. If you have soreness, like you mentioned too, by doing exercises, in that top of the neck, I'm sorry, lower neck, upper back here, you can do a stretch upper trap stretch where you bring your hand over one side, let your hand pull down, pull out that upper trap to stretch to help that shoulder relax. So you want to do is this my right hand, I'll, I'll, go, I'll face the other way so you can see me while you guys are doing too. Right hand behind your left ear, let your hand naturally pull your head to your left shoulder, a little bit of a turn, but the weight of your arm, pull your head down toward your body. So you feel all of this upper trap, which is going to be the base of your neck to the top, to the top of your shoulder, and upper back to the whole triangle muscle. At that point, allow that to stretch itself out. You realize how tight you are until you do that. You realize, That's the plan. Oh, I'm really tight. And always do both sides. This is a hold exercise. This is when you want to yeah. hold for about 30 seconds on both sides. 30 seconds is better. Because if my shoulders are, are here again, where my shoulders are pinching up, causing a hunched posture, that has to tighten up. By doing that stretch allows that whole upper back and shoulder area to stretch everything up. Well, I know, but it takes work, time, and effort. Every day. Every day. Even though I started this morning, still went to the gym. You gotta keep moving. If you don't move, what happens? If you don't move, free horse kicks in, right? Pain. Free horse and pain. You have to keep moving. Any questions at all? To replace, I remember all the exercises in my head. Focus on your posture when you sit. So I'm going to sit more with my feet either underneath me or to the side of me, but keep my body upright the whole time on the edge of the chair. Number one. Okay. If I'm going to stand and walk, I'm going to go against the wall to start at my posture first. Heels, hips, shoulders, and head against the wall. One thing I forgot to mention too, your hands, you, if you want to sit your posture, is open your hands up this way so your palms are facing away from you, in front of you, so that point the shoulders rotate out too to have more of an upright straight back. So, okay, so I'm going to walk. Don't walk like this, in, especially in public because people think you're weird. <laughs> but walk with your weight on your heels so your body stays upright the whole time. So wherever you feel comfortable, Lean back enough to where it feels a little uncomfortable to get your, your brain to calibrate and that is your better posture. It takes time. Again, it doesn't matter if you're 60, 70, 20, or 30. If your body's like this, your brain needs time and motion to recalibrate your posture back to a better posture, better position. It just takes time. Okay, which other one I mentioned too? The roll one, right? On the floor. So if I'm here again, can we put a rolled up bath towel to start to where our body can slowly bend over that rolled up bath towel over time for about between a minute to two minutes and from there if that feels comfortable legs down if they're up already or legs up if they're down and at that point last part of your hands overhead get that full stretch of the back get that back to arch backwards instead of being hunched forward any questions at all I'm going to take a break. It's tired. <laughs> Next one. All right. Talked about the broomstick stretch. We went through the whole aspect of getting your shoulders to rotate backwards and even up to allow things to move more. Broomstick first. Rotate. If you can, come straight backwards. That's comfortable for you. Okay. I know, Chuck. It's not going to be fun for you. Or... Come right over to one side, and then back to the side the other way. You can rotate the whole way, you can rotate the whole way. You can join the circus if you want. <laughs> or it works for you. But it takes time to get. If I, have, if I just every day and I just go to here, feels uncomfortable, good. Over time, you will go further back as you get more comfortable. You have to stretch. Shoulders and hips are the worst. Ligaments are very tight in the shoulders, especially hips because it has more load really tight, they wind up like a piece of rope. You have to unwind them continuously, keep them loose, your body stays here, instead of being punched forward. Okay? You know Same. I'm thinking, Tommy, is yes. you're in the shower, and then 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 you're in the shower,
and let the shower hit that area first, and then the way the muscles are warmed up, then you can probably do that easily. Whatever works for you. Yeah. But I, I go straight to my stick and my, my roll up, my towel and my roller at home for one tip. But it works for you. And to, some people, again, it's your body. Okay? This is not communist Russia. It's your body, do whatever you want to do with it. But what works for you to stretch, to strengthen, time wise, I give you minimums. What works for you, keep going at it. Okay? Towel stretch or bungee cord stretch, which is Dr. Tony's bungee cord, so you'll buy it online in a minute, is here. Start with your right hand up, left arm relaxed. As your right arm bends, we put the bungee cord or towel behind you, let the left arm pull you back. So now your right shoulder blade opens up. At that point, get that area to stretch in between your shoulder blades. Okay? So switch sides again. If I start here, left arm up, bend the left elbow, let that right arm pull back. Put that left shoulder blade to pull up. Let her. Can towel stretch or bungee cord stretch? All right. Yes. Shoulder blades. How to get them to move in here a little bit closer? When they're closer, they make our body up here instead of here. What do you think that starts, especially with women? Um, what what age do you think it starts when you start hunching forward? It's more common in women. Carry a baby. Even before that. What happens in high school for, I have, I have two high school daughters, right? What happens in high school, they start, women start developing their body, right? Oh, okay. They start hiding their body. Oh, yeah. So they start doing this. I have a girl who plays softball. She hurt her shoulder. Now her body is, for about two months, she was stuck like this, with neck pain, shoulder pain, upper back pain. Now she's more here, more open, more understanding, kept her shoulders open. Relax versus here, it's going to be weak and tight. So focusing on where, where, your, where your body should be is how to get those muscles to stretch over time. So we're going to talk about the next one's going to be your wall fly. Here, out, hold for two seconds, and back in. The purpose of this is the shoulder blades come together. Here, hold, two seconds, and relax. Okay. Last one was your, was it the uh, arrowhead which kind of bought water bottles again? Crystal geyser. Crystal geyser. Crystal geyser. Crystal geyser. Crystal geyser. Sorry. Crystal geyser fans over there. Exactly. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. I have called a uh, water bottle. That's all I use. Water bottle. Here. Reverse fly exercise. Weights in front of you. Water bottles. Up. Pinch the blades behind your neck. Up. Hold two seconds and relax. Two seconds and relax. So again, from the side here. Look, don't hit the wall. You're too close to the wall. Hold two seconds. Get the blades to pinch. Two seconds and relax. All right. Any questions at all? And if you can too, Tony, make sure your elbows are just a little bit bent, not too far bent, because you want that stretch back here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bend my elbows, maybe five degrees. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna keep that bend the whole time. Here, pinch and relax. So make sure back here you're feeling that pinch with the arch coming up the whole time. Any questions? If you can do that and hold it, good for you. I can't do that. Or you can modify it too by going here and pushing this elbow behind you more. If you don't have a privilege to have a towel, that's stuff out there. Fixing <laughs> comes, fixing comes out there. All right. Again, modify it. But once you start something, how do I modify that? We have to build the habit first. Habits sometimes take two, three weeks to start forming, and maintain that every day. Not just one day a week. Every day. Yes, Lauren. Oh, I recommend Dr. Tony for everyone. Mm. Go, go see him. He gives you. Uh, x-rays so they knows what your problems are and he'll take good care of your back and uh, you'll believe how good you feel. So. Well, and, the, and thanks again, I for my, my paid spokesperson in the back over there. Is, <laughs> is a lot of it is, this is part of my rehab. Again, I don't care if you're 70, 80, I have a patient Harvey is 93 years old, 94 now, is a lot of it is how do we move more to keep our overall body healthy. The science is there. We move our nerves that control our physical body 
our organs, our psychological psyche, it helps it stay healthier. My job is not getting you out of pain. My job is getting you to a healthier state so you maintain on your own, comes your norm, normal state. That way you know what to do to get when you're out of state, then you see me again. But I want you there, so I'm too busy as it is. I can't see everybody. But can you do stuff on your own by these classes here and everywhere else? I put these, again, if you haven't got, definitely have my emails yet, it's in as an email too. At that point, understand it's up to you to stay healthy. Not your doctor, not your chiropractor, not your psychologist, just you. And by coming to these classes, you learn things you can do for your whole body so your whole body stays healthy. So you can walk up the stairs, you can lift those grocery bags, you can do whatever you want to do. And not feel like you're not feel like you have to be dependent on somebody, independent as long as you can be. You remind me of a, yes. one of the recommendations is move it or lose it. Yes, <laughs> true. True. You have to move it. I got a question. Yes. You a lady, I don't know if we're supposed to reach way up at the top of the cover now. I knew a lady one time that older lady, but she reached way up there and got a, a box of dishes uh -huh. and she had pain for yeah. about six months or something. Yeah. So is that not a good idea? To if your body's not strong enough to do it, don't do it. Um. I'm not going to lift a concrete 300 pound thing off a top shelf. I'm going to use a ladder to get my buddy to do it if he hurts yeah. himself. Sorry yeah. about him. Yeah. 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 That's his fault. <laughs> but how do I do it? So I'm, and my, again, my tolerance. Use common sense. If it's too much, it's too much. Yeah. What else? I have to find, find a buddy of mine. Yeah. Find a friend. And I'll call a helper. But at that point, if you, do, if you have to realize you have to work with your tolerance, if not, you're going to hurt yourself, then it's, that's up to you. It's preventative. But preventative. when you're healthy, you recover faster from injuries, too. That's true. Yeah. That is true. You heal quicker and you have less scar tissue, so you know, your body can recover a lot faster. That's why when you have surgeries, for example, knee surgery, you want to go in healthy. Hip surgery, you want to go in as healthy as possible. I knew a guy at the gym, he did about three spin classes, two spin classes a day. And did a weight class too. So the guy was in the seventies. Like, what are you doing here? He was there longer than I was. <laughs> and because he was having hip surgery, he wanted himself as healthy as possible. Yeah. He wanted to make sure he went in there and came out as soon as possible. Too. And the rehab, why is rehab now? Current rehab tells you start moving right away after surgery because yeah. you don't want to build scar tissue. You want things to lock itself up. You have to keep moving the whole time. Yeah. Old, old, I guess paradigm or thought was is don't, don't move it for a month. At that point, we'll start breaking up scar tissue. That doesn't work anymore. If I, have someone, if I have a patient getting shoulder surgery, knee surgery, elbow, whatever it is to her hip, I tell them, has your doctor already set up the surgeon therapy afterwards? If he says, if he says no, I go, well, why? It doesn't make sense to me anymore. Not in 2019. You want to start moving as much as possible. You don't build scar tissue. Faster recovery. All right. Any questions at all from my audience? Yes. Okay. Today I'm doing an exercise. Good. Tomorrow. I have a little <clears throat> sore. Uh -huh. So am I supposed to abstain from tomorrow, or do I just go with the pain? It's not. It's not meant. Don't abstain. What I would do is maintain a little bit less tension on your stretching, and do a little bit less that day. If you wake up the third day and it feels better, do a little bit more. So good question. What I tell my patients is, if it feels the exercise feels like someone a new exercise, if it feels sore tomorrow, maybe hold off, maybe a day or so. Try it again. But if it feels like it's just a stretch, then do a little bit more the next day. Again, okay. everyone's body's different, so you're not, you may not feel that stretch I gave you today until tomorrow morning when you wake up in the morning. So give it that night, sleeping on it, see how it feels the next day. If it feels a little bit worse, back it off or hold off completely. At that point, try another day, the, sec, the third day out. But I don't stop, I don't, if people stop exercising, what happens is that stop exercising, that non move motion feels better. So what happens is people feel better, they want to feel better. They stop moving all together. So I try to get them to. I get try to get them not to. I try to get them to continue moving instead of stopping completely. Because at that point they, they know the motion getting it better, not the lack of motion. Well, at the gym they say no pain, no gain. That's what it says. <laughs> and they'll be up in my office tomorrow, the next day. They'll be at my door. I think your body's telling you something. Yeah, listen to your body. Again, tolerance is what your body listens to. Yeah, but again, can you work in your in a higher range of tolerance? where it feels sore, not just not any pain at all. I worked with a guy one time, George, about 10 years younger than me. He wanted to lift heavier weights. I'm like, that's cool, work out with me. He says, but I don't want to be sore though. I'm like, then good luck. <laughs> good luck with that. I can't help you. You're you're, if you're, if you're so human, if you're homo sapien, a human a mammal requires tension beyond what it's used to, God's become stronger. 
stronger joint, stronger muscle, stronger bone, relaxed nerve. The body requires that load. I was listening, I was listening to one of my books, reading one of my books again about muscle fibers. Muscles in your body, right? Muscle what? Muscle fibers. Fiber? If you think a muscle has broken down different fibers like a string, that's the name of the It's book. all connected. Yeah. That's not the name of the book, no. Oh, just that's that's the name just of the book. follow along, follow along. Ask questions at the end. But what happens is when those muscle fibers, when they stretch, yeah. they have four, four different types of stretching. We call them mechanoceptors, the way they fire. One. Number one thing, the muscles are actually working, activated when you're not moving at all. That's mm -hmm. one type of fiber. The last step, right, number four, jump number four, requires a lot of tension, a lot of load, a lot of tension to get it to actually fire. You want that muscle to fire also, because that point in your body is working 100%. You need all four to fire, along with load and tension, makes it a little bit sore, at least maybe a couple times a week, so your body has a full range of motion, full muscle health. You want everything to work properly. There's one muscle that you work without you thinking about it, and that's your heart, and it's a good thing. Well, how is your heart different than a, than, a, than a skeletal muscle? How is your heart different? Yeah. It's, it's an automatic muscle. It's you have to do something in your body. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I call it automatic, but, but I mean, it's different names for one, too. But those automatic nerves, they fire all the time. That keeps us alive, right? Those are automatic. If your body's under stress because other muscles aren't working properly, those, nerves, those joints and nerves that aren't working properly, they go to your brain get the autonomic system, those automatic nerves, to start firing at a stress state. If that happens when your heart's in a stress state, what happens to it? It starts beating faster. People come to my office not because they have heart problems, because they're so under stress, their muscles and joints are so stuck, not moving, now those nerves have gone to the brain, now they hold the whole body stressful, now they have heart palpitation because of that. So moving all the time, as much as you can within your tolerance, is your key to stay strong, relaxed, and have better posture, look taller, and better balance also. When your body's here, last thing, because I gotta go to work. I to work thing, I still work, I'm with you guys. Is if your body's here, you lose your balance because your joints aren't moving. Your joints require motion in your in your ankles mostly, hips, back, and shoulders and neck to maintain that balance. The balance, if your, your joints aren't moving properly, you have, now you have a wider stance and a more of a hunched posture the lower center of gravity to maintain your balance. I want you over time here and here to have better balance because here the joints are moving normally on their own. Here they get stuck. Here joints move normally, gets no, joints to fire, the reflex nerves to fire to your brain, maintain your balance. If you step on something, catch yourself right away. Same thing you walk backwards, same thing you walk backwards. You catch yourself right away. Yeah. Most people won't even try this. But when you walk this way as a training tool for balance with your body being upright again, at that point, walking toe to heel backwards, reversing it, allows you holding the wall to get a better balance. But it's now using your, your tactile, your sensory nerves, not your eyes to maintain your balance. So taking five steps at a time going backwards allows you to maintain that balance better over time and stopping in between so your body knows if you're stepping on something, you're going to actually hold something. You adjust your body. Yes? I'm thinking too, you know, being for seniors, we're always looking down because uh -huh. we don't want to step over a sidewalk that's not, you know, flat looking for things. So we're doing that. I think I read somewhere, look ahead, 10 feet. You didn't read somewhere you suck because I said it. So you're standing more straight. That was like my talk three months ago. <laughs> Is instead of looking, again, like she had said, instead of looking with your eyes, look, keep your head straight and look down over your nose, the lower part of your, of your eyelids, at that point looking out in front of you to know where your body is. But, if you, but again, if, if you train your posture, like I did this last weekend, you can hit a curb and you, you stumble and your wife laughs at you, but you don't fall. Like my wife did. <laughs> did you fall? No, I, I, it was yeah. like one you of those very—it was a very small your... subtle. I was like, "Hey, yeah. what's going on?" Yeah. All of a sudden, uh. oh. I was like, "I'm good." My wife sitting there laughing at me yourself. back yeah. Yeah. the whole time. So walking. First of all, set your posture first. Heels, hips, shoulders, and head. Come off the wall. Hold that weight on the back of your heels. And walk heel to toe with your body upright, looking down with your eyes, not your nose. And then 
That's that's a that's a Dr. Tony's other video. He's going to sell online somehow, some way. It's how do you walk heel to toe? Rolling your feet. Roll your feet. Don't stomp them. Roll your foot. So let the when you roll your feet, your feet have a natural arch that can spring. It helps your knee and your hip to get that same spring in the muscles when you're coming up and down. Don't walk like this and be weird if you walk like this too, but it kind of exaggerates that. Your foot has an actual arch to help maintain that, so roll your foot so your arch works with you to help absorb that impact. I have a gentleman, when he first came to my office, he would, he would stomp his feet. He didn't realize I was causing knee and back pain. Because that's how he walked. When you roll your feet, it allows you to absorb that impact slowly, where it's causing more compression in your knee and your hips and your back. What about arch supports? I see. Yeah. That's, where, that's where every day I tore my ankle, I tore my arch, I had to where I wear them now. And that helps you also keep that arch up instead of letting it go flat where you lose that, that spring. What's an arch support? It's what you put inside your shoe. Can you show you mine? Keep you from having flat feet. Yeah, my, my, mine's a mold, but you can buy soft ones too, like this, yeah. that allow you to actually keep that arch up so it doesn't want to fall too far. So that one fits your feet yep. specifically. I, I mine made because I'm special. Mm -hmm. oh, they're special. <laughs> I, I saw Dr. Tepper in Upland. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tepper, mm -hmm. T E P P E R. He helped me out with my feet. I tore mine doing marathon triathlons before when I was young, about five years ago. Oh. About three years ago, I found out that my right leg was half inch shorter. Mitch, no, yeah. And, 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 that when I finally got the right balance, this mm -hmm. it, it, I wouldn't say it cured the pain, but it evened it out. Well, that's what I, I, I had a lady come in here, she trained for the police academy, and she actually uh, asked me, How come I know my leg's a little bit off, so tell me what's going on? Her leg was off, or her uh, hips was off enough. She could put like a, a Walmart Target, just a simple lift, and then it's about a quarter inch, help balance yourself out. On the hip, on the heel, on the heel. Because that point, when, when your heel, when your when your leg length is off by so much, about 20 millimeters or a quarter inch, at that point your hips fall to one side, then you cause more knee and hip pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was training for the academy, so she was running a lot, doing a lot of squats, a lot, a lot of training, and it was making her knee just blow up. So again, that balance again, left, right, 50-50, take that pressure off that knee, cause your body to even itself up. Just in the hip, just uh, in the heel. You didn't need the just whole the heel. Thing. Just the heel. Only. Just the heel. Okay. They, have, they, have, they have a heel one that goes this way. I like the whole one because it doesn't slide as much. Okay. Yeah, the whole one, because sometimes shoes will slip. I like the whole one because it gets full support. Sometimes the symptom is back pain or something. Huh? Back pain, knee pain. You don't realize pain. it's your foot that's causing it. Exactly. Amnesia. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, so I got you guys. Thank I'm you. gonna work that big day.